Okay, YouTubers, I wanted to show you the installation of my Ruvati 16 gauge stainless steel sink and my Alfi AB2039S. So that faucet there is supposedly out of total stainless steel, even the spring up here, but I did notice that there is some plastic in this part. And so it, it seems to be a it can also swivel as I have it. Maybe you can tighten that down where it doesn't. There's a set screw in the back. Okay, that is setting in there very sturdy. If I shake shake it, it don't go anywhere. It's a single hole sink, Ruvati, eight, uh, uh, RVH 8000. That is 16 gauge stainless steel. And is a very nice deep sink. 10 inches deep I believe and I also wanted to note note that around here is a bead of silicone underneath that sink to seal it from water going in. I'm going to show you on the old sink what it, where the troubles lie on that. It starts uh, raising the laminate underneath on the old sink. Here's a uh, little view of the engraving that they've done. You barely see it there. Ruvati. And also my water stains from hard water, so if you don't wipe that down, any stainless steel sink will start showing those water spots. Also, Rovidia is on the drain basket down in the sink there. I also want to point out that I use silicone around this, under this lip, rather than plumber's putty. Now I now will show you why on the old sink. Okay, here's the old sink. You can see that it was a three hole sink. And the trouble with these tops of these sinks, faucets, is that there's very little area to seal that type of cover for three holes. And that is why I wanted to go in a single hole sink. And a couple of other things. These baskets here, they tell you to use plumber's putty, but I use silicone because even after a couple of years of us being in this house, this was a new sink, that started loosening up and started leaking. So after I sealed it with silicone under there, that was the end of that. It held good from then on for 15 years. So then the other thing I want to show you what happens to plumber's putty is it gets rather crusty and hard and then starts leaking water underneath. As you can see there's stains from the water. Comes down here where the formica is, ends here and starts getting onto the wood and starts swelling that up. Happens to be that my new sink covers that up plenty well, but if a person would use silicone on there and glue it down good, you wouldn't have any leaks under there, and that wouldn't happen. Notice the water leaking through this here isn't any too good either because, you, like I say, you just can't get enough glue or anything on those. So you want to think about whether you want a one hole sink or not. Also, the clips around these rails, these old sinks are fastened in real good with the little clips I'll show you in a second. These are the clips of the new sink. You notice this one, but this is how the old one worked. And they're quite good at holding that sink down. It catches along the edge of that stainless steel ring. And by applying screw pressure on that with the screw, it clamps that sink into place. This was what Ruvati came up with and it hangs from the side of the sink. I have a couple of pictures to put in, still pictures to show you how this looked. Anyways they hang in the side clip and you tighten them up. That didn't seem to work very good at all for me. You also hang them in there before you ever drop the sink in. So you notice these screws here are lacking the bracket and I used the bracket along with the these type screws to actually fasten my Rubati sink in and, and got a good firm grip on the sink. Okay, go back to the new one. Now this is the, the cutout cardboard that comes in the package with a very well packaged sink with a uh, cloth bag and very good uh, padding around the outside of the box that is what is standard for a good shipment. 
So I opted though that my sink, my sink, all I had to do was cut triangles out of this countertop and this sink dropped right in. In other words, my countertop is still along here going underneath. And I kept it that way because I wanted to use that wood and bolt this faucet down through the wood and the sink. This sink being about a quarter of an inch or three sixteenths off the top of the counter required a metal spacer put in here. And so when I bolted it down with this sink has yay many threads, this much threads underneath, which was nice, and tightened that up, then it clamped all this together and made a very strong sink out of it, a sink faucet out of it. So we're going to go underneath and show you what I did. So underneath the sink we can see here the bracket that is on the sink right here. I filled that with five minute epoxy and then drilled a hole up through that epoxy where you see the screw. Also this is just the side bracket that I cut off right here from what they already gave you. In other words, it's this part. This part sawed off here on this upper, right across here on this. So originally when these slipped up in there, you would tighten this screw up, which is a backwards thread, pulling the sink down and this bracket going up against the countertop. And as you tightened that up, the screw came slapping up against the sink like this. And all it did was keep bending this tab that's on the sink away from the sink. So not only did I fill that gap so that it would hold threads of a bolt, or in this case, sheet metal screws, I also pried it apart away from the sink a little bit because it's really welded up, up in here against the top of the sink. So I pried that little t bracket away from the sink and filled behind it with 5 minute epoxy too so it held it right up against the sink. So now when I put my little bracket here I drilled this or cut this bracket off just at the right spot to get a little pressure from that sink. So there's actually a little bend in that bracket right there as I tightened this screw up. And that epoxy really held those threads good so you don't want to get too wild about tightening that. But if your countertop was thicker than this, it would hang down, you'd have a smaller and smaller tab here. Or if it's a real thick countertop, then this countertop, then you could actually put a longer screw and not cinch it right up to that bracket when you're done. But that really held this sink in place and is really firm. So now what I want to do is move you to the back and show you the how I did the back bracket underneath the faucet. Notice here this back bracket. Yeah, how I handled this problem. As you notice here this is the countertop yet. There's the edge of the sink or the, or the inside edge of the sink and this is still the countertop continuing on out further. And so I just drilled little holes in here, a 3 8 bit, half inch bit, to let this bracket set up in here, set up in this hole down here, through it, and then made a little horseshoe brackets out of steel. Wow, backwards, everything's backwards. This here bracket is mine that goes over the top with the same screw with the with that tab full of um, five minute epoxy and this is hanging out in the middle air not up against the bowl of the sink back here so that's what you do on the back is so that you can leave this countertop totally in here so that as I move the camera down you'll see the way I handled this faucet here. That red that you can see in there is that piece of steel I put up in there. And then the nut, whoop, uh, everything's backwards, gotta look at it through the camera. And then the nut and the, with the long threads of that particular faucet, which is really excellent that I didn't know that when I first got it, was ordering it. But you can thread up through all the countertop 
as well as that 3 16 piece of steel which perfectly fills the gap underneath the stainless steel to the countertop and then of course the stainless steel sink faucet the faucet up there has an o-ring that seals to the stainless steel sink so there shouldn't be any water coming down through here like you saw on the old sink and then uh, I had very little room here to work and so I'll show you what I did to manage that okay so that should show you that I put a full piece of steel up there about two and three quarters inches wide goes along there three inch, three, uh, three sixteenths thick and a couple inches going both ways from the inch and a half hole that, where the faucet goes through <clears throat> so what I did to handle tightening that nut up is I as you can see on the end of this inch and a half PVC pipe I notched out spots for the nut to go and it fit right down in there then I threaded the hoses because you kind of got to put those up in there when you don't have a lot of room behind there put them on there first and then fed them right here up up onto the, all the flexible pipes hoses there and worked my nut up until it went up under the sink back there over the hoses tightened it up with some channel locks on the other end so a foot and a half a foot and a quarter or something like that to get past the sink and that worked fine then there was some adapters I had to buy for my half inch faucets this is a little adapter you can buy at some hardware stores otherwise you'll have to get the right flexible pipes to go up on there but that's not really able to be done because those are special fittings up on the other end so you have to either change these faucets or get the adapter one might be cheaper than the other the other thing I came across here was this remember I put silicone on the upper side of this basket but the other trouble I came across was whether I tried to use a steel uh, pipe waste disposal nut on there, waste nut on there uh, or the plastic black one like these it didn't matter those threads are too small for what it's supposed to be and they just strip before you get that washer tight in there it's a flat washer rather than a tapered washer so what I did was I ground off the little ears as much of this ears as possible and then put a obviously a hose clamp on there and I shrank that plastic now I can tighten that up as tight as I want and then cinch that up even more if I want. So it'd be nice if they'd uh, make their dies a little bit bigger and hold so the threads held your nuts, the nuts, but apparently they don't want to get it right there on that. So you can see that I wasn't impressed. The only part of this sink I wasn't impressed with was these brackets. And no matter what you did to tighten those up, as far as I could tell, maybe somebody can... Uh, enlighten us that that works better somehow than I tried to use it but um, I did away with that and put my own brackets on there and now that sink is down tight and like I say you want to put a bead of silicone around that whoops that edge uh, and uh, make sure the water doesn't come over the top over underneath this part and run down on the face of your countertop where the boards are exposed so all in all this is a very good sink really impressed these are sad sound deadening, deadening pads as well as the spray on coating which is awful easy to scratch so when you're mounting it and having to do a lot of fitting you're going to kind of find that shaved off but it doesn't really matter if it looks like that under here anyways okay so there's my installation hope you enjoyed it Hope you enjoy your sink and your faucet. I would like to make one more point. This rack that you see here comes with it as well as the strainer. So it's a pretty good buy on like over, overstock.com. They got the faucet on Amazon. But I wanted to show you this is a very square cornered sink. Not only on this corners, but down there. And so some have wondered if that's a good idea it doesn't seem to be hurting too much especially if you have a faucet like this where you can take the faucet and go around like this 
and rinse it out. But that was one concern. I I can tell that this is a, a piece of stainless steel that was you, uh, bent in a break and it has square edges. But if you have a way of, especially on this kind of faucet, it works pretty well. Okay, thanks. Okay, so now we're going to show you the Alfi, A L F I faucet. It is the model AB2039S. S for stainless steel. As I showed you early in the video, there is some plastic in that end nozzle. But we're going to show you the chief cook and bottle washer now and how this sink works. <laughs> and how quick and easy it makes washing dishes. We find that putting a pan in there to wash some of the, or keep some of the liquid water with soap in it handy. But, um, so we're going to ask our bottle washer chief cook I guess what she thinks of this fire it's really handy I like that when I'm canning I will be able to fit my canning kettle underneath the faucet fill it entirely up without a fight I like that I can go between a stream of water like this or a spray which is really handy when you want to rinse things off. I find that I'm using way less water to rinse things. You'll notice this more when I do the plates. They rinse a lot quicker. So how do you like the action of that little faucet handle? Is it easy to move? It is. Um, Accurate and you can adjust the flow? When I'm filling the tea kettle it's really nice because I can set the tea kettle down inside the sink and I don't have to get all wet. Well, I also noticed that you hold, leave the faucet hanging down a little bit while you're rinsing. Um, originally, that faucet came with a heavy weight that you clamp, yeah, underneath on the cable. <clears throat> Do you think that would, of course, pull it immediately right back up? So, do you think this is more handy, keeping that squirter nozzle closer to your dishes and moving it around, staying put? I like being able to move it around and leave it where I had it the last time. Because if I'm rinsing plates and turn the water off to save water, I don't want to have to reach back up, pull it back down every time I turn the faucet on. So it's a lot handier. Good. So can you give us a little measurement? There's the uh, people who are buying this faucet wants to know how tall this one is. There is a shorter version, but if you can give us a Tape measure from the top. So we're just about 24 inches to the top of the covering. That the stainless steel spring. So you can flex that around. Some people wanted to know if you put that under a cupboard, how short it goes. But you, and you don't get much out of it. That's only about a two inch drop when you do that, and it would be flexed like that. So that would cut down on your height of kettles and stuff. That would be handy. Um, so, can you show us how I've left that spin and do you think that you like it to do it that way? So one of the things that I've had to learn to overcome, and it's my own personal thing, has nothing to do with function, is when I push it away, it doesn't all go together. Um, that's a two-handed if you want to keep it all together, but it doesn't change the function at all. You can get it out of your way and even if this top part is off center a little bit from where you are it still works it just in my own pea brain looks weird to me and I just have to get over it okay it all works so how far does that hose come out and fill say a kettle up on your sink so you can get would you quite... like to take a shower no that's quite all right I can and go a long ways. So a kettle that's clear sitting or a pot sitting out there is easy to fill. If I wanted to fill a bucket outside the sink, which I don't think I'll ever have to do, the sink is plenty deep, I could do that over here. Okay. So did your husband make it good and sturdy? That's oh, yeah. what we want to know. Let's see you shake that there. Grab the main part of the faucet back. Oh, the back part? And see how that thing's flex. 
Okay, so you got lots of strength, right? I do. You're a powerful woman, right? I am. So that looks pretty solid. <laughs> Your husband must really be good at that. <laughs> Putting in sinks. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we'll watch your rinse. Oh, I should show there. you how nice it is for things like 13 by 9 hands. So, this is a nice 13 by 9 baking dish. In my old sink, it would not fit. I would have to wash it outside of the sink. I can have clean dishes, dirty dishes, in three spots here at a time, which is really nice. And then to rinse it, I can either take it way down into the sink, or I can even do it the old-fashioned way, rinsing it like this. I love it. Beautiful. For not having a dishwasher, kind of tuck things and hide them. This is a beautiful thing. So I have these cute little bowls that sit in the window waiting for a party. And periodically I have to wash them. So we're going to wash those today. I'm still getting used to this, but I like it. I seem to be keeping up on washing dishes a little bit better than before just because it's not a chore to find room I'm not fighting with pots and pans I'm not fighting with my cookie sheets and baking racks I'm not fighting with the canning kettle it is a beautiful thing well thank you for letting us come into your kitchen and watch you wash dishes <laughs> hope you don't have too many to do today. That depends on that lovely husband. And how much he eats, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Bye.